What's up guys? Toby. Bible Bates. Today we're going to be shooting some more core shots. Because it's an order and I decided I'd bring y'all along. If you don't want to see it, my bad. But uh, I mentioned the rainbow trout and uh, had a guy want some. So we're going to do the rainbow trout core shots. See how they turn out. Uh, I've already took the liberty of oiling the rods and put them in there. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go back a couple videos for that part. Um, I'm going to do a little color build with you too, but uh, let's get down here. My bottom color is going to be a white pearl. I put a little bitty bit in there, but I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm just using this mother of pearl. And it does not take much with these pearl powders. So, well, again, with a core shot, you want the outside thin. So, I mean, I'm like barely got any in there. Probably that might be a little bit more than I really wanted. Uh, I have some small black flake in there, but I'm going to put a little, little bit of bigger black flake. Now, with these powders, you do have to stir them in a lot better. Um, I didn't want to bore you with the... Uh, how I get the bubbles out, degassing or whatever through the vacuum chamber or degassing. Using the vacuum chamber. But a very light white pearl. You can see the knife through it. It is light. You don't want to go too light. You want that color in there, but you also don't want it thick. Because if you get thick, thick, you will not you will not see your core. Talked about that before. I know everybody's like, oh we know that. But uh, the ones we did before, I believe, were just single color, and then we shot the core in. These are going to be a double laminate, two-color laminate. This is watermelon. I usually use green pumpkin, but I want to go with watermelon today because you can quickly go over or go too thick with the water. Uh, sorry, the green pumpkin. So I'm going to go with the watermelon. And then we'll give it some black flake for texture. And uh, if you've seen rainbow trout, they have a little bit of a uh, little texture to them, like a little bitty bits of black flake. So I've got some small in there, and I added just a little bit of the bigger, the 040. Again, I don't want nothing overpowering. Really ain't much on the knife. But it's a small amount of flake. Like I said, I don't want to go crazy with it. But I want it to be seen, but more natural looking. Alright, our watermelon is getting ready. I was at seven drops on this watermelon. So remember that. We're at seven drops, and I'm going to thicken it up a little bit. Like I said, I don't want it to be overpowering, overbearing, or whatever. But, so that's it. A little bit of small pearl powder. Just regular pearl. No silver, no nothing. You can see through the knife, there's, there's color, but not a lot. And I may actually put just a hair more in there. Just a touch with these powders. Oh, oh, screw extender fail. Guys, uh, another thing. I do not know what's going on on social medias. I get on there, I post my little baits or whatever. I, I, I'm tired of looking at it, but there is so much drama between bait makers and painters. And guys, if we're a small business, you gotta, you gotta stand together. You gotta, you know, support each other man i actually order from guys that do not have if i don't have the mold or whatever i'll order from them just to keep you know help help them out help myself out for maybe a bait that i don't have but the drama of oh so and so so and so let me doing this bait thing i can go ahead and guarantee you most people are shooting Pretty much the same plastics, pretty much the same molds. There's a few of us that have our own custom molds made or custom baits. And 
not mint. Some do, some don't. But it's a. Uh, and I have some old pink. We're just gonna shoot. That'll be our core. So I'm just gonna have it like warming up. So it'll be a little bit more ready. Um. We're at seven drops. I'll get back to the drama. But support each other, guys. That's that's what we're here for. Not drama. Got out of high school a long time ago. Of course, I'm a lot older than some of you guys, but that's just a Little Works Watermelon 101. So I just put three more. So we're at 10 drops right now. You stir too hard, you will stir in some bubbles, but not bad, especially with this Calhoun's. So we're at 10 drops, and I think think I'm happy with it but I also think that I want to go a little bit thicker and we're also going to add I've got some uh these crazy bright uh flake I'm going to probably spike some of that it's a natural looking pink I might spike it with a little bit of that chartreuse uh pink glue I ain't glue but bright pink flake we're going to do a little bit more let's do two more drops so we're at 12 12 drops, Little Works, Watermelon 101. And again, I've already added some uh, small black. We're gonna have to add some big black. Uh, if you add a lot of black flake, it will darken your color quite a bit. So be easy on your flake. It's a lot easier to add something than it is to take it away. So. Add in small amounts till you get your desired look or feel or and sometimes like I'll just use my knife and I'll take it and uh, sort of scoop it up on there a little bit and just see what I have and no measurements here because it's so such a small amount but uh that's what I did worked for me so figure out your routine there we go, just a little bit of black flake, not a lot. Just to give it a little bit of that speckle look. Ah, now one's cooled off a good bit. Let me heat this one up just a little bit. Get them close to each other. Though we are shooting a laminate, we want it to shoot good. We'll just give it like 23 seconds. Let's go with 23. Put our mold in my hole down here. Set my pink off to the side now and we'll get ready to shoot this thing uh, I already put the rods in and worm oiled them so you can go back and watch the other videos I just coat them with worm oil put them in uh, one of the prior videos I showed how I put to put them in there so now with these clamps it makes it tough to uh, get both my colors in my little hole here I'm going to go a little bit more. Sorry, guys. I thought it was ready. But it's not. But again, just a little bitty small amount. Uh, I showed you how small it was. Of the pearl powders. Pearl powders are, are very strong in your plastic. So you do not need as much as, say, your liquid colorants. And I'm still not 100% sure, man. I think I want to go two more. Like I said, I, I don't want it to be too light, but I also don't want it too dark where the core doesn't show. And I know in these core shots, and especially with some of these colors, they may look one way in your cup, but a lot thinner when you shoot them into a you know a smaller bait. There's not as much material, so it it's not as thick looking. And again, I'm just being picky. I'm gonna go two more. So we're at like 15 or six, no, 14, 15, somewhere around in there, drops of watermelon. I'm not gonna add anything to this pearl because it is uh, pretty much where I want it. I said it's really light as well. 
but I'm happy with it. And I believe I'm happy there. We put some small flake and some bigger flake. Of course, it's all heat temp flake. We feel about the same. Ah, it's this hot. And since I can't get both of them in the, my little hole down here, I'm just gonna have to do it this way and hope like crap I don't knock them over. Same as any other laminate, we're gonna shoot the uh, dual injector with the blending blocks. Make sure everything's good and on there like it's supposed to be. Again, I want my temperatures and my consistency the same or about the same. This pearl is actually a little bit thinner, so I'm gonna blow it off like I'm blowing off my kids' food or grandkids' food. My kids are older, so 30, 28, 25. All grown up now. Alright. I think we're good now. Good enough. I'm impatient, so I'm just ready to shoot. Again, just from talking about these things, now that I felt that that green's a little bit thicker. So, sorry about this. It took a little long, take a little longer than I thought it was going to. All right, we're gonna go with that, and while that sits for a second, we're gonna throw this pink back in to make sure it's ready when I'm ready for it. All right. Let's shoot this thing. Again, it's just a three inch Ned. I've got it down in the hole, it'll be blocked, but because I got the colors up here again, I don't want to burn myself, man. This stuff is not good for you if you get burnt. I hope I drew up enough right there. That is why I take it, I usually put it on by hand because I hate dragging that plastic because it's dripping across. I don't know why I did it that way then, just, who knows. All right, so that injected felt good. They are a little thin. Temperatures were down, I just hope I got the pearl a little bit, uh, down to the same consistency. Like I said, it, when you, when you that's the reason I take my blending block and take it to the dual injector because it just strings stuff everywhere, plastic. So that's why I like to let it drain a little bit and put my top on here. Now there is a chance of getting burned, but I mean, it is what it is. I'm gonna set these out of the way. We're gonna look at our pink real quick just see how close it is so I'll know if it's close to being ready. I said this is a natural looking pink it's not a bright bright pink so it's not real flashy but more of a natural pink look that I think you see on rainbow trout. I go up to the mountains here uh, mountain wrist is what it's called up above Wahala in South Carolina and I fish for rainbows up there and love it But, I mean, I just do that for relaxation. It's so peaceful up there, peaceful and quiet. Walking in the streams. So this is the thickness of the density and the colors we went with. Not real thick, like I've said, but not too thin, I hope. Because you want to see the difference in the, uh, the top and the bottom of the bait. So, you want to make sure that you've got enough that you can see the colors, but not enough to drown out your core shot. Mm. And just for fun, I ordered me a little stone mold. We'll do a video about different types of molds. I wanted a little four inch Helgi. So I just ordered me a little cheap stone one off Amazon just to see, and I've shot it. I I got the baits in there laying out. I wish I would have uh, 
if I, I wish I had them in here, but uh, stone molds do not shoot near as good as your aluminum molds, but you know, if you're just doing them for yourself, they're perfect. I have to put a coat of oil on them to make sure they don't stick. But other than that, they still produce baits that are very fishable, still good baits. See all this stringy stuff and ugh, this reminds me of spider webs. I don't like spiders. Alright, there's our green side. And there's our pearl side. So we pretty much got what I was looking for. I'm not mad about it. I try not to be mad about anything. So, because as you get older, you realize, don't sweat the small stuff. But it just kills me to see people that are, like I said, on other, not on YouTube here, but, uh, it's getting to where I don't even want to get on social medias anymore. It's just drama. I'm like, come on, guys. Small businesses, man. Stick together. Pulling the rods out. And again, I make sure I push the rods through to make sure the ends didn't get closed up around the rod because, again, we want that middle core color to shoot right on through there. So you want to have your holes. Some people will cut these off. That's probably the best thing to do to make sure your hole on the, uh, the sprue side is not covered up with anything. But knock on some wood. I don't have any problems with that. But again, other little tricks is to shoot those, shoot that core color hotter so it flows better. And again, with two color laminates, we talked about this before, your sprue is not just one color, so we can melt it down and make something out of it like we did on the last one. Oh, I'm gonna give these that. So you have your green top, your watermelon, and again, I see, I knew it. I wish I would've went a little bitty bit darker. Just a little bit, but it'll work. And we're gonna set these right back in the mold just like before. And we're gonna check the holes on this, on the side that the sprues were. Because if you don't, and you don't have to put them back in top, bottom, or whatever, because now we're just shooting the inside color. So you don't have to worry about, oh, the top's gotta be green or, or whatever. Just pop them back in there. And again, leave that end, make sure the end is open. Push them back through. I'm really disappointed in this watermelon now. I now I want to redo it, but I'm going to have to anyway, I believe, for the customer. But the video's already started. It wouldn't get by with that. But again, it's just, I, w I wanted it a little bit thicker. Not much more, but just a little bit thicker. Now we've got them back in there. Of course, with the ends still open, and not all the way to the end of the mold. And we're gonna carefully put our mold back together to make sure that we don't pinch the baits that are in there. Again, we need to we need the plastic to be able to flow through there. I always put my glove on because you get oil and worm oil and all kind of crap all over your molds and your clamps. And so I always put my glove on just because I don't like that feeling all the time. But that's just me. I know I'm weird. Bam, we're gonna set our mold right back down in our hole now because we're only gonna be doing one color. And we're gonna heat it back up. And like I said, we may spike it with this, uh, order a bunch of these uh, chartreuse flake, blue, green, this is a really small one, so small flake, so it's almost like a powder, but it is flake, just very small flake. Um, I will show them to you, but I have to get my broke leg set up. Oh yeah, we are about ready. Get 
some of his chunks in there. Get them melted down and we'll be ready. Go another 22 seconds. I'm gonna put my watermelon back up. Ow. And I'm gonna show you some of these flakes, but also, I make a lot of crappy baits or crappie baits, depending on where you're from. Here we say crappy. But this is flake that you can get that is supposedly ready for heat. Dang, I can't even hold stuff. Got the greens, another crazy looking red. Of course, chartreuse. I love chartreuse flake and crappy baits. Crappy baits. Some blues. Purple. And this is some pink. So, I don't really use those for bass colors, but I use them for uh, a lot of crappie baits. Alright, we are plenty hot enough, so. Just said I don't want it too hot because I don't want flashing. No, we're not bad. 338. We're going to add a little bit of this. I don't think it's really going to make much of a difference. But we're going to add some. Look at the color of that flake, man. It is just bright. We'll see if it makes a difference. We're gonna put a good bit of it. Scooping ahead. Again, it's very small flake. Like the 015. So it's almost, actually reminds you of a powder more than flake, I guess. But some of the other flakes are bigger. And it really didn't make no difference. You can see it, but it's not, it doesn't stand out, but I already had that pink thick. Because like I said, I want that little thickness color. I don't want this bright, bright, like we did with the, uh, what I call the melon smash. I want it more natural looking. Now we'll switch to the single injector. It's not feeling real smooth, so I'm gonna add some oil. Just so we help get a good smooth even push because it helps. And we're gonna shoot this pink in the middle. Again, we don't need much plastic because we're just filling up the runner and the inside of those those baits. Bam! We're gonna hold pressure just a little bit so it doesn't draw down and hopefully everything feels. Because if you shoot baits and you know core shots can be a pain, sometimes they feel good, they fill up perfectly, sometimes they don't. So, so that's what we shot it in. So, more of a natural looking pink, not a big, crazy, bright pink. Because I want it to look more natural. And now we're going to get all this stuff out of the way again. And the pearls, man, you save all this because, you know, I use, I use pearls on a lot of different things and, of course, watermelons. So you can save all that. You'll learn certain molds, how much plastic to use uh, to fill it and not have, like, a bunch of leftover extra stuff. But you make a lot of baits. I don't make a shit, uh, a lot, a big ton of them. I just sit back. I get that off there somehow, but uh, that's our pink, that's our fill in color. Please, please be right because these things can be such a pain in the butt. Oh, and they feel y'all good luck because uh, every time I've done core shots with you guys, again, I'm gonna redo them because I don't like the green, I wish it was a little bit thicker. But they will fish. You see your pearl on the bottom, your green on the top. And it's just enough for that core shot to show through. Just enough. Let's take some of them off easier to look at them. And we just pluck them right off of our sprue. Just pink. 
I like them. I would have went darker with the watermelon. But, like I said, when you shoot them, you saw the color of it in the uh, cup. Your baits are smaller, so they're not getting as much color. So it's hard to tell sometimes how each bait. Each bait will be different, too. The thickness of the bait, like I can shoot the same cup of plastic into two different size baits and get different shades of that color because of the thickness of the bait. So, you learn that as you do more. But this is our rainbow trout core shot. And again, I wish the green was a little bit thicker. I'm going to redo them. just to go a little bit greener but other than that they look great they worked great that's the main thing they shot good uh, there's just enough pink showing I think to make it look like a rainbow trout and these are really nice in a Cinco type bait because uh, I'll fish them a lot of times like a fluke on an EWG hook throwing them out working them Instead of having a big old swim bait or something, I can throw a five inch Cinco and do just as good. So, not great, but not a boo-boo. I'm happy with it. And it's just enough to let that, that pink show. Again, I didn't want the pink overbearing. I didn't want it looking, I got to find out, oh, find a better way to display baits, but let's hold them and hold them. So there they are, our little baby rainbows. And it's basically just the same old core shot, but shooting it with a, a dual laminate. And the light may actually be making it coming through. It looks a lot thinner than it does in person. So let's hold them again. I see against my hand or something where the light's not shining directly on, the color's a little bit, shows a little bit better. So I like them. They'll catch fish, but I am going to do another set just to make them a little bitty bit darker. Appreciate you being here, guys. Support your local bait makers, no matter if it's yours or buddies or whoever's, man. Everybody support each other. We're all in this together. We all make awesome baits. We all catch fish on our awesome baits. And stay together, man. Like I said, we're not in competition with the big guy. But if you want to be, you can't do it by yourself. You know what I mean? We don't have all the money these big companies have. So stick together, support your local bait makers. I appreciate it. If you don't mind, give me a little like and subscribe. And thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Let's go catch some fish.